neat, uh, neat experience. Um, it was held in a in a in a hockey rink in Hamilton, Ontario, and the uh, the wood local wood carpenters in in Hamilton, Ontario, had built these, you know, just these these L shape uh, platforms for the contestants. And I want to say there was I think twelve of us that made it to that point. Mm -hmm. And um, you brought all your brought all your tools to the you, know, you flew them up there, brought all our tools, and they would give you. Um, there was a uh, there was a written written section on one day, and then the next day there was the 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 actual application test out on the ice. The the um, it wasn't ice at that time; it was dry, of course, but right. on the hockey rink. And they gave you a set of drawings. They said, "Here's your material." Come to find out, there were obviously errors in the drawings on purpose, mm -hmm. and um, you just had to. Look at the drawings, get it built, get it figured out. It was radiuses and door frames oh, and wow. little soffits, and you know, it was no more. Maybe it was like a ten by ten platform with yeah. a with a wood wall, sure. On it. And sure. you had to do, you know, so do, you had to perform some wood nailing. You had to then you had to frame some walls and soffits, add a metal stud, set a door frame. And there was a couple other things, uh, put corner bead on and what have you. And there was judges that would walk around and judge your work. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, there was some local Canadian guys there that were, you know, thought they were the Thought they were all that, right? Yeah, and yeah. and um and I think I was one of the guys that brought the drawings over and I said, This this I don't think this works. This isn't gonna work, you know, and they told me how to deal with that and then we went through there and you only had so much material. Uh -huh. You couldn't ask you, I need more studs because I cut them all wrong. Can't do that. Got so it. I think that was uh, I think that was six hours that they gave us to to do what this That's was. pretty impressive. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And you know, and um, you know, I came back. You know, and the 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 uh, the union gave me, I think, five hundred dollars, and there was some recognition. You know, I was in the paper. It was it was pretty neat as a as a young kid. You know, I think at that point, I think I was m maybe eighteen wow. at that point, wow. and uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. You know, I know these days they have uh, uh, you know the drywall drywall contests where see so you can hang the most sheetrock and that type of stuff. Sure. I don't believe they have that same um, exact program that I went through, and mm -hmm. and I believe they had changed places. I think, well, I think Wally's was in in Hawaii, I believe. Oh, that was a nice place. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, that was a that that's very impressive. So you had your hustle on again, you know, right from the beginning to be able to get into yeah. that position. That that's impressive. Certainly, yeah. You know, and you were you weren't even in your twenties yet no. when you pulled that off. So no desire to go to school or anything, go to college. So I went to Don Bosco Technical Institute in Rosemead, mm -hmm. and it was a it was a, it's a technical high school college prep, and in five years you would come out of there with a. Uh, a high school a high school diploma and an associate's degree in building science. Hmm. So I got my associate's degree in five years uh, out of that program there. Um, and uh, as I kind of mentioned, I had that internship for one semester is where Wally sent me out to that job. I had it. to show I had to show some employment with a contractor is mm -hmm. basically what I had to do is for the internship. So um, you know I think at the time <laughs> I think I was making. Seven fifty an hour, seven dollars fifty cents an hour, and I'm like, I'm a millionaire. Why would I want to go to school, making seven dollars fifty cents? I had a drawer full of paychecks at seven fifty an hour, yeah. where the payroll department would call me and say, "You need to cash those." Got it. I'm yeah. living at home. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't have much going on, right? right. So, I uh, I just chose not to. You know, I was thinking maybe maybe I can go to Cal Poly Pomona. I was going to go mm -hmm. there and look into architecture and engineering and such. And I, I just, you were making, I the wanted money. to, I just wanted to not necessarily the money. I just, I really, really enjoyed as I do still today. I really enjoy just creating and building. I mean, sure. you get such instant, you know, all of us listening to this and all yourself is yeah. even in your shop here. I mean, you, you create something and you're like, man, that's awesome. You get this kind of this instant gratification, yeah. almost like a, a rush, right? Well, it's badass because you can touch it. Yeah, you know, and and it's yeah. uh, it it didn't exist exactly, and that that is definitely gratifying. Yeah, you know, especially when it's standing for uh, decades. 
Sure. You know, and you can go back and check that out. And, you know, there's a lot of guys that, that got into construction that they were making well, back in the day, minimum wage was like three twenty-five. That's what my yeah. dad paid me, right? When he paid me, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You, you know, you over doubled your money, you know. Yeah. Uh, and so you got an instant raise and everything. And then the other thing that's that's really cool about um, you know coming up in the union too is you're you know they're giving you that incentive of you know you're putting the hours in to move up to the next stage. And when you move up to that next stage, you're getting a raise. Sure. You know, and that that keeps them coming back for more. Yeah, you know that's that's uh, it all it, it it works. You know, it's a it's a good program. Yeah, to to make that work, and then, you know, as as you're moving up and you do get up to the top, you know, being a foreman, getting the two dollars an hour. I don't I don't. That's what it was back then. Is what they gave you was two bucks an hour. Uh, it's a lot of extra responsibility. It's, yes, it is. But there's a lot of guys that are waiting in line and want to move into that leadership position. Yeah, it's really not about the money to them. Um, right. They they just want to they want to run this work, you know. Yeah. And uh, but it it's a lot of extra responsibility because you you're managing that project. You right. Know? And it was like Greg. Greg was a piecer. Greg Stedman was a piece right. worker. Sure. So he, um, he, that is the epitome of lean construction. And so now I know he's heavily involved in training this new labor to be lean. And even, even guys that are journeymen can still learn better moves. Oh, absolutely. You know, be yeah. more productive on yeah. these jobs. Because the bottom line is, the only way that your company is making money is if by the material that you're installing on the wall. Right. Adding value. That's, that's the bottom yep. line, you know, yep. and, uh, you know, the way that these jobs are set up and the way the foremen are setting it up, it, you know, if you're paying a journeyman to hunt material up on a job, you're not making money. You know, if it's there for him to install, you have a really good chance of making some money on the job. Absolutely. You know, and that's, uh, stepping back from a piece worker, you know, and, and implementing that into an hourly situation is pretty interesting. And I think it's, it's really creative, you know, to, to make these companies more efficient out in the field. Yeah. You know, are, are you involved in any of that training, that program that they have going on right Qu now? Quite a bit. Yeah. So, um, you know, when I came into this role as a general superintendent, it, well, I mean, I've known Greg since 2004, but in this role I'm in now, Greg and I talk about this quite a bit. You know, he's, 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 he's certainly a mentor of mine at this point in the position I'm in now. So um, he is our lean director for khs and um, and he oversees, you know, among many other things, but the lean lean culture and lean objectives and lean focus on all the other offices mm -hmm. um, on the in the western states and so um, he's also you know as a partnership him and I we go out and we actually just you know we we nurture this culture of, mm -hmm. of lean construction we really do yeah and um, and it's you know it's a lot of fun it really you know KHSS has a culture that we 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 have and there's 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 um you know criteria that we follow that maybe each office might have a, have a little difference in but we have a it's very consistent it's very standard sure. right and um and to your to our conversation earlier i think it's really important that the apprentice you know the youngest stalker scrapper that hasn't even worked on any project whatsoever, all the way up to our, to up all the way up to our project superintendents and myself. I mean, we're constantly learning how to be a better carpenter. Sure. Some of these folks that that come to work for us um, don't understand that. They don't get it. They don't know what we're trying. They don't know that what we're doing is helping them be a better carpenter. Sure. Whether they leave us and go to work for any of our competitors or they leave the industry, you know. We're making them a better person, a better, 
a better carpenter, a better agree. lather, a yeah. better taper, a better plaster, a better painter. You know, they're all they're all learning about how to do work better and smarter. Sure. And um, you know, and and, and sometimes th- those folks they get up, they just like, nope, I'm not interested, mm-hmm. and they they walk off. Yeah. Um, some are. Uh, some are very leery you know they'll stand back and go okay what's this about you know maybe i'll watch for i'll watch for a little bit and see if this makes sense and then they come around and they're like man this is this is amazing mm-hmm. and um and then some some of those guys just absolutely excel in this and they'll take it and they just proud to watch them coach you know, our lean culture to other people. Sure. It's, it's really, so there's a whole, you know, range yeah. of, of people from not interested to I'm going to excel in this, you know, to help push this culture yeah. that we're trying to, that we're doing. So, yeah, well, it's a lot of fun. Both of your personalities, yours and Greg's are um, very soothing. Like you guys, uh, you want to help people. You're not trying. You're not doing it as an ego trip, and you're not throwing that out there. And that's that's the the vibe that I get off of you guys. That you 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 just if you don't understand it, we're going to explain it to you until you do understand yeah. it. We're going to do it in a respectful way. We're not going to yeah. try to degrade you or, or cut you down or anything like that. You know, some guys will pick it up right away, and some guys won't. And if I if you're if they look like they're trying then you're ready, willing, and able to help them. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's, that's you where that goes. Watch them for a little bit and see where they're struggling. Yeah. Give them some suggestions. Mm-hmm. Some of them, some of them want their, your suggestions and some of them, some of them don't. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. And you don't take yeah. that personal, you know, but you no, it's business. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, you can, you can pick out the good guys all right away with oh. the experience that you have. Yeah. You know, and again, you know, getting back to a lot of guys need to be taught how to work there. It's kind of a skill. Some people need to learn, you know, yeah. and then eventually it will, it will kick in and it'll be like, they're, they're just off on their own. The light comes on, you know, yeah. and they're, they're doing good. Some guys get it and some guys don't. Some guys take a little longer to get it, but they do get it. Yeah. And I'm you know? sure many of the people sitting in this chair probably have the same stories uh, coming into this generation of, of workers, I guess you'll call it. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they seem like they're getting younger and younger. Um, they need more attention. They need more training. They, they need more coaching. Um, they're not plug and play guys you know, coming off the tracks or, or coming from, I mean, you get those guys as well, but, Mm -hmm. um, I think if there was one thing that we're noticing is that these, these kids coming into this industry need more and more mentoring and sometimes almost a father figure, you know, I've been, I played that role as well. We've Mm -hmm. all played that role of these, you, you see some, you see some young man or woman that comes into the industry that just need a break. And they're just so willing to do something, but they don't have that. And you just kind of, kind of coach them along. And then they, and they'll, some of those people have stuck with me for, for my whole career because we gave them that, that we saw that diamond in the rough and they're, sure. yeah. But these guys, they just need, need a little love. These guys, yeah, some coaching, some help, some, you know, not like, oh, your first day you're out. Right. You know, well, you remember those days. Yeah. You either did it or you didn't. Oh yeah. And if you didn't get the hell out of here, yeah, I'll get somebody else. And, and there were people lined up to do it, but it, it's, it's, it's changed a lot. Yes, it know? has. And we, we, you know, you didn't come from a construction family. No, and a lot of the guys all. that I do have in here came from construction families where it was kind of in their blood. And you sure. know, maybe the dad didn't want them to get into the trade, but you know, again, they would, they would get in and they would, work in the summers and they'd be making some good money, you yeah. know, and they'd be like, fuck that man. I ain't going to school. You know? <laughs> and they, they would stay in it and they'd work their way up and they ended up being great mechanics. Yeah. And, um, now it's, it's it, like we were softer than our dads our, the dads that were in the trade and they were softer than the other guys beyond them. You know, sure. cause those dudes were tough, man. 
they were very, very tough. You know, they didn't have any of the safety stuff. 